For our final checks, we're heading over to the NDS Appendix E. See you over there. We find ourselves in Appendix E with non-mandatory local stresses in fastener groups. Uh, we have E2, net section, tensile capacity, E3, row tear out, and then on to the next page, E4, group tear out. As an additional bonus for all of you here, although we are wrapping up our design example, the NDS itself was kind enough to provide a, uh, a sample problem as well um, with, with numbers and, and everything else associated to show you um, how to walk through things and give you more background. So you can see down here, I've highlighted where they actually plug and chug. So let's head on back, but this is where all the equations um, and all of the variables are defined within those equations. Check number one, net section tensile capacity. That gives us this very simple equation. And from the beginning of the problem, let's remember that we have number two, Southern Pine, and the following adjustment factors that we've already solved for. Beautiful. All right, let's go find F sub T so that we can then find F sub T prime. For that, we're heading over to the supplement. See you there. Now be warned, for Southern Pine, you will not find yourself in table 4A. They actually have table 4B specifically for Southern Pine. So careful with that one. We scroll down a little further here. Um, you can see I've already wrote in a little bit here, but two to four inches thick, we have two by 12 members. If we, uh, we know that we have a number two, and if we go to size ca uh, classification, we need to be a little careful here. Um, in table 4A, most of the time it says two inches and wider. So it's, you know, two by four, two by six, two by eight, two by 12, all apply. But for this one, they, they cut you off and they, they split it up into further and further categories. So you need to be careful. Uh, so two to four inches wide, we have 12 inches wide. So we're actually gonna go all the way to the bottom here. This is our man. We're still in number two. We're not dense or non-dense or anything like that. We're just gonna be a standard number two. And we're gonna go, uh, I'm gonna scroll back up. We know we need uh, tension parallel to grain. And that lands us right here with a capacity of 450 PSI. Let's bring that back. All right, now we need to head over to the NDS to check to see if we need any other adjustment factors for the check that we're doing. This lands us in table four, uh, 0.3.1. Now, notice that we have moved away from the kind of the connection uh, chapter, chapter 12, and we moved back to chapter four, which is just kind of sawn lumber. Um, that's because we're checking the, the wood um, kind of failure mode, if you will. Not, we've already done the bolted connection design, but now we're actually checking the wood element itself. So that's why we're, we're back in chapter four. We know we're checking for net, net tensile capacity. So FT prime is what we're looking for. We have FT now, and we just need to make sure we have all these adjustment factors. Um, we are not incised for our problem here. We already have CT, CM, and CD. So CF is the only thing we haven't solved for. And if you scroll down, size factor, I've already kind of given us a little underlines. Two to four inches thick, that's us. We have two by 12s, can be found in table 4A and 4B. Remember, we have Southern Pine, so we're going to table 4B. This one's a little strange, but from everything I've read for the size factor, um, we are in the supplement, by the way. Um, we actually don't have, uh, or we have a size factor, but from what I'm reading, the appropriate size adjustment factors have already been incorporated in the tabulated design values for most thicknesses of Southern Pine and mixed Southern Pine dimensional lumber. Then it goes on to give kind of the, the exceptions that you need to watch out for. So you can read through this, but from what I understand reading through is that our C sub F is just 1.0. And on top of that, if we were to plug 12 in for D, that would also spit out a 1.0. So I'm going to use that moving forward. Let me know in the comments down below if you think I've misinterpreted this. So now the only thing to get uh, FT prime is just apply the adjustment factors. And the only one that we have is actually C sub D, which is 1.25 as we previously discussed in the previous videos on parts one and two. That gets us an FT prime of 562.5 PSI. Now we just need a net. A net is just the cross-sectional area of your connected piece um, minus the, uh, the, the bolts that are holding your connection together. 
So if I go green here, we know we have two rows holding these bolts together. And ultimately our failure mode is going to look a little something like this. I'll go green and your failure mode is going to be tensile rupture. I'm gonna call it tensile rupture um, of your main wood member uh, right through that green kind of squiggly area there. And then this, the, your main piece would become disconnected and would pull off to the right. So that's the check we're doing here. So we're checking through that cross section. You know, if that's AA, this is section AA right here. Well, we know each of our bolts is uh, one inch diameter and we need to include a 1 16th inch uh, oversize of our bolts. And we have two of those, which means that A net was gonna equal the following. That gets us an A net of 13, I'm gonna round up 0.7 inches squared. Um, this is the thickness of your member. This is the width of your member. This is the, uh, what do you want to call it? The thickness of your bolt with the 1 16th added to the diameter. Uh, this is the width of your bolt through the main member. And then you have two bolts. That's why the two is there. So now we can solve our net tensile capacity, 7,706 pounds. Check number two is row tear out check. And this is going to look like the following. So this is where both of your rows would just uh, fail basically in sheer uh, shearing of the wood main member along the your rows of bolts. So this is an important check and it's determined with the following equation. A couple more variables here, but not bad. Ni equals three, that's the number of bolts in a row. T is the thickness of your main member, which is 1.5 inches. Now jumping back, I wanted to show you S critical right here is the minimum spacing uh, in a row I taken as the lesser of the end distance or the spacing between the fasteners in row I. Um, so let's go see what our two our two distances are, and we need to choose the lesser of them. So one end distance, seven inches, but then your uh, spacing between bolts in a row is four, and then your other end distance, the more critical of them that we talked about in previous uh, videos, is four inches. So your S crit is four inches. And just to be clear, this T times S crit is actually your A critical from the definition and the equations in appendix E. Now we just need FV prime. And to get FV prime, we need all of our adjustment factors, but of course we also need FV. And we are going to grab that from the supplement again. I'm not gonna go this time, I just grabbed it myself and it's the following. 175 PSI. Let's check what adjustment factors we need. We find ourselves here, we don't have incising and we have these other three. So we have everything we need already, great. FV prime equals 175 PSI times just C sub D, which is 1.25, which gets us 219 PSI. We now have everything and we can solve. ZRTI prime equals the following. 3,942 pounds, and now this is per row. We have two rows for our connection. So uh, ZRT prime is gonna equal ZRTI times number of rows I, which is two for 7,884 pounds. And last but not least, the group tear out check. This is gonna look like the following. This looks awfully familiar to our failure mode for block shear uh, in steel. And as you'll see with the equation that I go through, very similar uh, understanding of this is a combined tensile and shear failure of your main member. Let's solve for this section first. This is really our shear capacity of our main uh, member. And this is our tensile capacity. That's how it's, it's split up, just like in block shear. Well, our shear capacity, ZRTI prime, we already solved for above right here in yellow. That gets us 3,942 pounds. Uh, times I, I being the number of rows that you have, so right here and right here. ZRTI was for row tear out. So the failure plane looped around and you actually had two shear planes um, for, this, for this failure mode. In this condition, we only have, if I go green, just the one plane that is shearing. So we actually need to take your ZRTI prime, divide it by two, and then multiply it by the number of rows that you have, which we said was two. 
So ultimately, they cancel out, but your total capacity for ZRTI prime uh, portion of the equation is just the 3,942 pounds. It is not the 7,884 like we solved for up above. So just be careful of that. What about the tensile section? Well, FT prime we also have, which is 562.5 PSI. And now we need AN, A net. Now for that, we're looking for the tensile capacity for just this squiggly blue area here for our main member. So we have the spacing between rows already defined. Uh, let's scroll up just so you can see. Here's our original problem. And you can see in yellow here and in red, spacing between rows is four inches. So if that's four inches, AN is going to be four minus uh, one half of each bolt hole um, that needs to be subtracted out from that four inches. Uh, the bolt holes are one inches, one inches, one inch. Uh, with a 1 16th oversize. So 1.0625, I believe, to include the 16th inch. Then you need to multiply by the thickness of your main member. It's a two by 12, so that's one and a half inches. Gets you an A net equal to 4.4 inches squared. All of that gets you a tensile capacity for this failure mode of 2,479 pounds. And now you need to add these two together, getting you ZGT equal to the following. 6,421 pounds of capacity. So now if we com uh, compare checks one, two, and three, we get the following. And there you have it. Z being our bolted uh, capacity that we checked in the previous videos, and then checks one, two, and three for um, different failure modes of the main wood member itself. And as you can see, our limiting uh, check was check three, which is our group tear out check. So our connection is actually not limited by the fasteners themselves or yielding of the fasteners or anything like that, but actually um, of the main member, giving us a total capacity, a, uh, an ASD capacity of six point, you know, four kips. There you go, team. Thank you very much for stopping by the auditorium today. Hopefully you're feeling confident or to learn just a little bit something new about wood connection design. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed this content. Subscribe if you haven't yet and join thousands of other engineers who are helping better themselves one step at a time, one example at a time. And if you wanna take it one step further, why not consider joining Team Kestaba? Every contribution helps me create more content, more example problems, and reach more engineers who are trying to learn and better themselves. Until next time, Catch you around the auditorium. Peace.